Greetings, everyone. My name is Micah Ta, and I'm a high school student currently attending West High School in Torrance, California. Today, I would like to share with you the growing global health crisis of diabetes and obesity. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a rising senior at West High School, born and raised in Southern California. I'm a three sport student athlete who plays golf, cross country and track. And my plan is to pursue a career in the health sciences. And I aspire to conduct research and or provide patient care to promote wellness and improve the quality of lives worldwide. Additionally, I'm a student ambassador for the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health and I have the privilege of conducting research this summer at the Lundquist Health Institute at Harbor UCLA Medical Center. So here's a brief introduction to the topic of my presentation on diabetes and obesity. Diabetes is a chronic progressive health condition that dysregulates how the body turns food into energy. With diabetes, the body does not make sufficient insulin to control its blood sugar levels. Over time, this can cause serious health problems such as heart disease, vision loss, and kidney failure. Obesity is the leading risk factor for diabetes, and therefore the two are closely associated. Obesity is defined as abnormal or excessive fat accumulation in the body that presents a risk to one's health. Consuming unhealthy foods and beverages such as sugar-sweetened drinks and highly processed foods, as well as a sedentary lifestyle, can lead to obesity, and therefore diabetes. As highlighted on the cover of the current issue of The Lancet, it states new estimates published this week in The Lancet indicate that more than 1.31 billion people could be living with diabetes by 2050 worldwide. And the graph to the right models the rapid rise of diabetes amongst adults worldwide. Just over 500 million adults had diabetes in 2021, yet projections show that number to be 1.3 billion by 2050. And that's a dramatic increase. Here, the graph on the left shows the growing prevalence of diabetes for both men and women from 1990 to 2017. And in fact, the number of cases nearly doubled for each five-year increment. It is evident that the onset of diabetes generally increases over time, beginning as early as the teenage years and advancing well into the ninth decade of life. The graph on the right displays the prevalence of diabetes globally, including Asia, Europe, Australia, the Americas, and Africa. Diabetes is not only global, but affects all people regardless of SDI, or socio-demographic index, which is an indicator of social and economic development. So these alarming statistics demonstrate how diabetes and obesity is a serious global health issue. And so the goal of my presentation is to not only build awareness of this global health crisis, but educate and equip people to mitigate their chances of developing diabetes or obesity. Now, although the prevalence of diabetes and obesity is concentrated amongst people in their adult years, my hope is that the youth and young adults in our audience would not dismiss this escalating epidemic, but rather place greater urgency and priority on daily lifestyle choices, which ultimately affect their own health and well being. Here's a figure from the medical journey, The Lancet diabetes and endocrinology. It illustrates the consumption of sugary drinks, contributes to increased body weight, a 27% increased risk for diabetes, and a 20% increased risk for metabolic syndrome. Furthermore, consuming refined grains like pastas, baked goods, and breads leads to an increased hemoglobin A1c, a 26% increased risk for di diabetes and long-term weight gain. Now, in addition to diet, a lack of exercise plays a vital role in one's chances of developing diabetes and obesity. Sitting is now referred to as the new smoking. And the American Diabetes Association reports that the average American sits for more than seven hours a day. Too much sitting detracts from one's ability to maintain healthy exercise habits. According to a study published in the medical journal, Archives of Internal Medicine, Intensive exercise improved endpoints in those with type 2 diabetes. When comparing the experimental group, uh, those who had intense exercise, and those in the control group who had no exercise, results demonstrated that those who performed regular exercise 
had a much higher chance of lowering their hemoglobin A1C to below 6.5%, reduce their A1C by 0.5 points or more, and reduce their body max index and shrink their waist circumference by five centimeters or more. Based on research findings such as these, the American Heart Association recommends at least 30 minutes of moderate exercise five times a week, or at least 25 minutes of vigorous exercise three times a week, as well as high intensity muscle strengthening at least two times a week. So in conclusion, what can we do to prevent obesity or type two diabetes? Johns Hopkins Medicine provides an answer. By maintaining a healthy diet, which includes avoiding sugary drinks and refined grains, exercising regularly, and managing our weight, one can significantly lower their risk for developing diabetes and obesity. And this is my hope for all of you guys, all of you here today. And I would encourage you to share this information with your family, your friends, and your loved ones. Together, the lifestyle choices we make can help stop the growing epidemic of diabetes and obesity in our homes, our schools, and our communities worldwide. Before closing my presentation, I would like to thank the Global Health Leaders Conference at John Hopkins University for providing me with this opportunity to share with you all. I would like to thank the Los Angeles County Department of Public Health for allowing me to be a student ambassador, educator, and advocate. I would also like to thank the Lundquist Institute at Harbor UCLA Medical Center and Dr. Virender Rehan for allowing me the opportunity to participate in medical research. And finally, I would like to thank all of you for listening to this presentation. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me through email. Again, thank you all for your time and attention.